Welcome to this quick start video on the Honeywell XNX transmitter. These videos are intended to give you a quick step-by-step -step process for utilizing the many capabilities of this instrument. As always, refer to the manual for details and follow all safety recommendations. In this segment, we'll focus on setting sensor ranges, alarm set points, and alarm functionality. XNX has been mounted in the field, the sensor has been installed and power is applied. We can tell that simply because we've got the green LED that's flashing and neither the fault nor the uh, alarm LEDs are lit. Our task today is going to be to set the sensor range. In order to do that, we first have to enter a correct password to access that configuration area. Factory default password is 0000 for both level 1 and level 2 access. Level 2 is the access level for sensor configuration. Uh, we have some customers that choose to set a separate password for level 1 and level 2, allowing a technician to execute calibration functions, but at level 2 to prevent unauthorized changes to the range and alarm setting information that, that we're going to be working on here. The access to this menu is accomplished via a magnet. Uh, a magnet and screwdriver combination is included with every X and X shipped. There's no need for any special tools to access the menus we use the magnet and wave them over these check marks uh, to accept the values or use the scrolling arrows left and right to uh, amend the values. Again, our first step is going to be to enter the menu uh, and that means we've got to enter our, uh, our passcode. To enter the passcode, I wave the wand over the check mark. We end up with uh, uh, enter passcode menu. As I said, our default passcode is 0000. So what I'm going to do is enter the check mark to advance over, 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 and then finally to enter the menu mode. Once we're in the menu mode, we see options for information about the instrument. We have information about testing functions. We'll get into that in a separate video. There's a section on calibration, uh, also going to be addressed in a separate video. And for our purpose, the configuration menu. Once I've arrowed over to configuration and configuration is displayed, I use the check mark to accept that menu setting. Once in this menu, we have options for setting languages, alarm values, ranges, uh, even bus configuration details. Uh, we'll cover those in separate videos. For today's task, uh, in this task in particular, what we want to do is concentrate on selecting the range. So in this case, I'm going to use these arrows and I'm going to move over until I have range and alarms as a highlighted section. I want to enter that submenu to do that. I check and accept it. And now we see what the current displayed range and alarm values are set for. We're in the range menu. I've got the current sensor range that's highlighted. In order to get in and make any range modifications, I'm going to accept that function with the arrow key. In this circumstance, or in all of our sensors, uh, the calibration range information all is contained in the sensor element itself. That gets transmitted to, uh, into the transmitter. So if, to make changes to any available ranges, we'd use the arrows to index up or down until we had the desired set range. The instrument also provides us with the information on what is it allowable. In this case, for an oxygen sensor, the minimum range that's available is 25, the max is 25. What that's telling you is that this is a fixed range sensor. For carbon monoxide, other toxics, we have many range capabilities this minimum and maximum window tells you where you can frame the concentration range and marry to your 4 to 20 signal. In order to accept the values, again, the process is the same. You want to accept it with a check mark and then work through the process, always ending with the final check that we'll get to in a second that is actually the final uh, accepting of settings. That's the confirmation step to say, this is what I want to have happen. In this menu, we also have the ability to set our alarm set points and ranges. So I'm going to continue through this process. I'm going to arrow over, and the first selection is Alarm 1 Direction. Direction is an indication of whether you're looking at an increasing or decreasing alarm. In this case, I want to keep a decreasing alarm because I'm looking for an oxygen deficiency circumstance. So I will leave that downscale acting alarm level. I'm going to arrow over. In this case, the alarm, uh, first level alarm on a decreasing value was set at 19.6. We're going to change that to 19.5. Again, I enter that submenu. I would arrow up or down to get to my values, check mark to accept and scroll to the next value. In this case, we're going to set this to 19.5. I'm 
I accept that value, we move on to the second level alarm. In this case, the settings are acceptable, downscale acting at 18. I do need to make sure that I go through and confirm all these changes by having highlighted, uh, highlighting the check mark on the LCD display. You'll see accept settings as the set point. I accept that function and we get an indication and feedback from the transmitter saying that those changes have been made and accepted. Final step in the process is we want to set the personality or the latching or non-latching function of any internal relays if we have them installed. To get to that menu, we arrow over one more and we scroll to the latching or non-latching set point. Again, enter with a check mark. In this case, our alarm one level is set in a non-latching function. The difference is the dotted line that uh, appears above that alarm setting. If I choose to enter that, I can scroll over and make this a latching alarm. Again, with the left or right arrows, check mark to accept that variable. Arrow again to the next value. You see that the display changed and it's indicating I have a latched first level alarm. Uh, I follow this process through until I get to my fault relay, make a decision on whether or not a, I want my fault to be a latch or non-latching relay, and once again, finally make the step of arrowing over and highlighting my check mark. Uh, displays accept settings. Do you want these changes to be uh, set into the system? In this case, we're going to make those changes. I get confirmation that the settings are uh, accepted. From this point, we've made the range adjustments as available. We've set our alarm values, our alarm personalities, latching functions for the alarms. I can now exit out by highlighting over the X button and I'm back into my display value with my range and alarm values set as necessary. Thank you for watching these Honeywell XNX Quick Start videos. The Honeywell XNX Universal Transmitter is an extremely powerful and capable industrial gas detection platform, but it's very easy to configure and very simple to use. Remember these videos do not replace uh, the manuals and uh, you need to understand what's in, contained in those manuals and the safety warnings as well. Please let us know if these videos have been helpful, and if you've got ideas for other videos, please let us know that as well. Uh, we'd like to find out ways to help. Additional information on this product can be found at www.raco.com or at the Honeywell Analytics website. Thanks again.